Hi guys, my name is Hannah. Welcome to Winsome Cottage Garden. I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. Uh, as I kind of teased in my last video, it's finally here. Well, it wasn't just my last video. I've talked about it in a couple. Today we are building a squash trellis that I'm going to put on my driveway with grow bags to grow some longer vine varieties that I just don't have space for in my small garden here in the city. You guys have probably seen my garden in various videos, but this backyard space is kind of it and I've got a lot of it. It's looking great right now, but a lot of it is used for uh, perennial gardening and cut flowers, which I just love. But really the only vegetable space I have are these two beds up here, this right here, and already on my driveway, four, uh, four feet long by two feet wide. Uh, cattle troughs that I've used for my peppers. This new trellis is actually going to go right here. I'm really excited about this. I know I, I said it's a squash trellis. I'm also going to grow a couple varieties of melons on it. In fact, I have some things already growing uh, in those grow bags, which I'll show you in just a second, but I also have uh, some things I need to seed, which I really should have done already. So I'm going to be cutting it close in terms of viability, but I'm crossing my fingers that it's going to work out and I'll still be able to get some squash and watermelon yet this season. I think they're going to like the spot that they're going because my driveway is a sun trap that they're just going to be able to bake. And with the right amount of water, I think they'll be pretty happy. So that's the other thing that I do want to set up today is water for this. This project might span two days. I don't know how long it's going to take me to actually set up the trellis. Um, but my goal today is to set up the trellis, get the bags in place, and then the drip might take another day, but it'll all be within this video. So without further ado, let's start building this trellis. I got it assembled. I will say the first thing the instructions say is that you should do this with at least two people, preferably three. So that was the only part of the instructions I did not follow. Um, I haven't got the netting up and it actually took me a lot longer to assemble than I thought. It wasn't hard. It was just uh, balancing and finding things like I couldn't find my step up. So don't tell OSHA that I took a chair. But um, I'm actually going to finish this project tomorrow, so I'm going to leave this here and we'll pick it up then. We'll get it planted, get the netting over, get drip set up, and I will show you the whole shebang. Hi guys, it's a new day. I'm ready to finish setting up the squash trellis and get uh, the rest of the seeds in the grow bags. My first port of call, so to speak, is to get the uh, net up on the trellis, which is going to take a hot second. 
Uh, and there's actually an open house going on across the street from me. So there's a lot of traffic. I think what I'm gonna do is set you up somewhere and just kind of go. In the end, I'll go through all the varieties that I'm growing this year on the trellis. And I should add, this is the first time I'm doing this. I think it'll be a great way to expand my growing space, but I have no idea how well it's gonna go. So we'll get to figure that out together. to um, the pepper plants that we just potted up. What I'm doing is actually cutting the elbow out because I find it hard to pull. Then I have um, just a thing of hot water that I boiled because it makes it a hell of a lot easier to do this. And what I do is I find the end. This is the line I'm going to bring in I'm going to add a three-way split just like this. So one going up to the thing, one with the supply line in, and one with the supply line out. Here, what I'm going to do, just to show you with the supply line out, I put it in for about five seconds. And then, because it makes it a lot more malleable, then I just kind of work it in preferably till it gets past that second one so this is actually going to go in this is going to go in like this so supply line it's kind of hard to show the pushing Okay, and then this guy. We go in like this. Now it's all hooked up into the system. There's that same system. I run the line out and I'll tack this down a little. But it's going to run all the way along the outside of these pots. Then when it's long enough, I'm going to cut it. And use this figure eight to just uh, cap it off. So you fold it and then you put it back on itself. Then. I'm just going to tuck this under here. Now I've got the supply line and I can just tap into this with my quarter inch. I have one of these handy dandy tools that makes the hole in this for me because that can sometimes be hard. So I just kind of go like this. Then you see there's a hole right there. Just like with the others, I'm going to stick this guy in there so it can soften up a little bit. Then I take a straight edge coupler and I just work it on. Then I take the straight edge coupler, find my hole, and pop it in. And I unwind this so it can get as far as I want. And I'll cut it off. And I pop this back into the water for a couple seconds and add a, a emitter regulator to the end. 
this is a two gallon per hour one. Finally, I just tack it down in the middle with a landscape staple. And when I come and plant my seed, which I'll probably do right there, I'll make, I'll do right there. I'll just make sure the water's really close. Oh, it got really humid and really still. So I'm gonna quickly finish, get these planted, add some mulch on top, then I'll show you the varieties. It's all done and I think it's going to be so cool to see it in action. I can't wait until the vines go all the way over because it's going to act like a wall into my backyard which is, and an entryway, which is really, really fun. Now, I don't know if you got to see me planting this side because I think my camera may have cut out. But on each side, I have five bags of varying sizes. Some are 10 gallons, some are 15 gallon. They're all grow bags. I just bought them off of Amazon. Uh, and this one... We have a Crimson Sweet Watermelon. This is a Sugar Baby Watermelon. This guy, we have a Waltham Butternut Squash. And then this is a Spaghetti Squash. This one right here is a Blaze Pumpkin. And this one on the other side is a Snow Leopard Honeydew F1 Hybrid. This is another sugar baby watermelon. Here we have a honey bear acorn squash. This is another spaghetti squash. And in here I have a Fordham hook zucchini, which is actually not a super vining. It'll be more like a bush type. You can see here that this one that we pre-started is all, almost big enough to start training. So I just kind of stuck it up there. The netting was long enough to go all the way to the grow bags on this side. But on this side, it didn't quite reach it. So I'll have to wait till those are a little bit longer and or maybe see if I can train a string or something down. But I am just so pleased with how this turned out. And I hope, I hope it works out. The one concern I have is I'm not sure what it's gonna do for sun on that back end uh, or on that back side. The sun rises over there and kind of travels and sets over there. So I think it should still get some decent sun. We'll just kind of have to play it by ear. Oh, but I did want to show you this. Look, this is a um, princess something pink poppy and it's just starting to crack. I think that's gonna be it for today. Um, I am just so happy with how the trellis turned out. I know I've said that like five times, but it's something I've been thinking about doing for a couple of years, and this year I decided to just finally do it. And I hope it works. Uh, I might not get like the exact yield I would if I planted them in the ground, but the reality is I don't have space to plant them in the ground. One year I actually tried to plant one or two pumpkin vines in here, and it was just a hot, hot. They were constantly just going into my neighbor's yard. They didn't really mind it, but um, I was conscious of the fact it was infringing in their yard. And um, I think that this is going to be a much better solution. Everything I'm growing, none of them get super big. Like, I don't think you could grow like a Connecticut pumpkin that's gonna get 15, 10, 15 pounds on it. Both of the watermelon types are smaller. Uh, thank you so much for joining me over the course of the last two days as we just kind of worked to get it done. It took longer than I anticipated. It probably would have gone a heck of a lot faster if I'd had, you know, somebody helping me like the instructions said to. But I was able to put it together on my own and I think it just looks so good. I'm so, I can already see it. I hope that you can too. And I hope it's as good as I see it in my mind. Anyway, I can't wait to show you as we kind of track its progression throughout the summer months and see how everything fills in. I know I say that a lot, but it's true. It's just one of the things that I really enjoy is watching the new growth and the new fruit and all that kind of thing. And I think this trellis is, I hope this trellis is as magical as I think it's going to be in my head. Only time will tell. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next time.